Because he already Ram Palmi is immersed in Rama Gunas and Rama Nama, that itself will be persuading him or forcing him or making him to write Rama Gunas. But why is Brahma Deva coming in between? Because in order to show that this is not a Grantha which is just written by a human being, though Valmiki Matrishi is a Rishi, but he is also human. So it needs divine intervention that Bhagavan or great people have recognized this Grantha and only then I am starting to write. So if you see the first shlokam itself, the first shlokam in uh, Valmiki Ramayana is also written by Valmiki Matrishi only. So if you see in Bhagavatam, in this start, Janma Jasyataha, there won't be any Uvacha there. And I feel that there shouldn't be any Uvacha also, if it, because in some texts it is printed. Why? Because now, uh, it is written by Vairavyasa Maharishi in his Samadhi Siddhi. So that is why there is no Uvacha present in the beginning, because he is not realizing that he is his body. He has gone beyond the body realm and he is in that Samadhi state, so he is writing Janma Jasyataha. In that way, we have to consider it. If that being the case, if only that individual is recognized, then comes his name, then comes his form, then comes all the actions that he do. If the individual itself is beyond the body realms, then there is no need to present or mention that this individual has written it. That is why if you see the Kirtans of Sadashiva Prabhendra, he doesn't write his name as the signature there. He says, uh, Brahma. He, he mentions the term Brahma there. Why? Because Paramahamsa there. He becomes mentions the name Paramahamsa because it is not a name, it is the city or the state in which he is present. So for those people referring to the name or referring to the person or referring to the laurels that they have obtained, those things are not required at all. So that is why if you see Bhagavatam starts with just Janma Yasthiyataha. Likewise if you see in Ramayana, if you see the first shlokam, Valmiki writes Valmiki there. He doesn't mention, I am asking those questions. He mentions Tapasvadhyayamritam, Tapasvi, Vavidangaram, Naradam, Paripapracha, Valmikir Munipunga. He is the person who is writing it, then why should he write Valmiki there? He has forgotten that it is his self who is writing. So he generalizes as if the third person is asking a question as Valmiki. So, and if you see in the second chapter of the Valakandam, it is told that Valmiki Maharishi enters into Samadhi. Like how Vedavyasa entered into Samadhi to write Bhagavatam, similarly he also enters into Samadhi and in that Dhyana situation he is remembering all the Charitram that happened early and to the moment in which he is present. So, Pano Amalakam Yatha. So, all the Jnana and all the knowledge that is needed for him to write this Ramayanam just comes and comes to his hand in six. So, that is why he says, Tad Upagata Samasa. Everyone came, everything came to him. So he didn't go in search of words or he didn't go in search of texts. He didn't go in search of the situations or the story that happened. Everything came to him. That itself shows that this is not just a man-made Grantha. It has given intervention to it and it has come for a greater cause. So it mentions Tadubhagata Samasa Sandhiyogam Sama Madhuropa Natarcha Vakya Grantha. So that is why Valmiki Madhurishi writes the name and not mentions I am asking. So he has forgotten that he is the person there. I, he has forgotten the sense or the term called I. So that is why he writes Tapasvadhya Niratam, Tapasvi Vavdinangaram, Naradam, Paripapracha, Palmi, Gere, Munikundava. So in that state he is writing and in order to urge him to write, Brahmadeva gives him two reasons. Dharmatmano, Gunavato, Loke, Ramasya, Dhimataha. If you see the entire Ramayana, you can encapsulate in these two terms. So, Dharmatmano Gunavato. Dharmatmano Gunavato. So, wherever you see Rama, wherever you see Ramayana, all the dharmic activities of Ramachandra Prabhu is recorded. So, don't understand that he has done few alhamic activities also, but it is left recorded. No, it is not like that. All the things that he has done is dharma. So, there is no scope for changing it. And since Valmiki Bhagavan, if you see, even the things that we feel wrong about Ramachandra Prabhu is also mentioned. That is why there are several questions asked now. Otherwise, if he has to create an entire good picture of Ramachandra Prabhu, if you see in other Ramayanas, it is modified. In other Ramayanas, it is changed. Because you see Kanka Ramayanam, there is modifications from Valmiki Ramayana. If you see Tulsi Dasa's Ramayana. So if you want an example, in Valmiki Valmiki's Ramayana, Ramana comes and touches Sita and abducts her. But if you see in Kanka Ramayana, it is different. If you see Tulsi Ramayana, it is different. If you see in Kambhana Mahayana, he is specifically mentioning that Ravana is afraid to touch Sita Mata and he is carrying her along with the hermit in which she was staying. So this is the way in which Kambhana Mahayana is. 
Similarly, if you see in Tulasi Dasar Ramayana, he goes into a different way where he mentions that it is Chaya Sita, it is not the original Sita. So, it is the reflection of Sita that what uh, uh, Ravana abducted and went and finally when Sita completes her Agni Pariksha, then the original Sita comes out of it. So, this is the way in which Tulasi Ramayana has depicted it, but the original version is Valmiki Ramayana. So, he doesn't alter or he doesn't change us. He mentions exactly the facts what is mentioned in it, so that gives the authentication that this is what has happened. So, if Ravana could touch Sita and Abhyadha is what is mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana. So, Valmiki Ramayana mentions all those things clearly, he is not afraid or he is not, doesn't want to change in which the story has happened because Brahmadeva has mentioned that also. He has mentioned that Tachavke Vidam Sarvam Vidam De Bhavishyati Ate Vag Andhuta Kavya. How it has happened, it will be in your knowledge. So, Tachapi Viditam Sarva, how it has happened? Viditam means happened. Viditam Te Bhavishyati, that is the way in which you can write. His hands can't uh, change it or the what is there in that story. So, Tachapi Viditam Sarva, Viditam Te Bhavishyati, Nate Vag, Andhuta Kavya. You will not record a statement, you will not record a scene that is faulty or that is false. So, Nate Vag, Andhuta Kavya, Kachi Atra Bhavishyati. All these are statements and all these are Anugrahams that are given by Brahmadeva to Valmiki. And he mentions Dharmatmano Gunavata. So these are the first two things that we need to note. The entire Ramayana stages on these two birds. So Dharmatmano, you see the entire Ramayana, in each condom, in each place, you can see the Dharma of Ramachandra Prabhu. Only if a person is Dharmi, then his qualities will be great. If, there, if a person is not dharmic, then there won't be great qualities in one or, one or two will be there and that two will be negligible. That can't be recorded. That way it will be. So, if a person is truly dharmic, only then his qualities will be so great. So, these two are joined together and mentioned dharmatpano gunavat. So, if you want to see dharma of Ramachandra Prabhu, all the places you can see in Ramachandra. So, the first question itself is mentioned gunaha. So, one first thing, Samprakam Loke, Gunavan, Kascha Vidyavan, Dharma Gnesha. So, if you want to show your valor or if you want to show your power, in the correct sense, for that you need two things also. So, that is Dharma and Guna. So, if you see these two things are the perfect synonyms for Ramachandra Prabhu. And if you see in Aranya Kandam, generally, the term uh, Dharma or the term Jnanam or Vairagyam that we speak about or Bhakti, or the sorrows or the miseries or the difficulties that we undergo in our life, they don't have a form at all. They are always abstract. They don't have a form. If you want to see dharma, dharma is written. Dharma is the things that have been taught to us. So we can't say, oh, show me the form of dharma, then only then I will believe it. Those things are not there for dharma at all. Similarly, it is not there for bhakti. Bhakti doesn't have a form. Jnana doesn't have a form. These are things that we need to experience. So similarly, if you want to see dharma, it doesn't have a form. But if you see in Aranya Kandam, there is a place where the term comes Ramo Vikrahavan Dharma. So if you want a Rupam or if you want a manifestation of the concept called Dharma, then you have to see Ramachandra Prabhu is. And who is mentioning it? That is more important. If Lakshmana mentions, it is okay. If you say Sita Devi mentions, it is okay. If Dasharatha mentions, it is okay. Dasharatha is mentioning to KK Satyena Lokan Jayati, Vijam Dhanena Raghavaha. Guru Susrushaya Bhaktya Dhanusha Yudhi Shastra Vama. So all these qualities of Rama are spoken by Dasharatha. If they are spoken within Ayodhya, that is not, that don't show how great the person is. And the term Rama Vigrahavan Dharma is spoken by Malicha. Malicha tells to Ravana, don't go and play with Ramachandra Prabhu. He is the Rupa or is the embodiment of Dharma. So the enemy who is going to disguise himself. And he is going to come and play in front of Ramachandra Prabhu. That person, you can't call him a person, that guy is mentioning Ramachandra Prabhu has Ramo Vikrahavan Dharma means then the quality of Dharma that Ramachandra Prabhu possesses and he shows he has reached such a low person like Malicha. So he is he has understood that Ramachandra Prabhu is Dharma because all who can understand, great people can understand, but for a person like Malicha to understand the quality of dharma, then I will say, dharma So, how much dharma he should have hold and how much dharma he should have radiated and he should have followed. So, a person like Malicha who is ready to disguise himself and come and play in front of, whether it's not need to be Sita Mata Ramachandra Prabhu, whoever it may be disguising itself is wrong. Disguising itself is a crime. 
but he has disguised himself and he is coming and cheating them. On that, if such a person can understand the quality of Ramachandra Prabhu, then look at Dharmatma. So you can see oh, in everywhere in Ramayana, not only Ramachandra Prabhu follows Dharma, he makes all the people to follow Dharma. He keeps his father in Dharma, he keeps his mother in Dharma, he keeps uh, Isita Devi in Dharma. Even generally, in a family, if you see it is mentioned by Kausakya Devi, it comes in Ayodhya Pandava, where she says that in the family, the older people are the one who will be constantly speaking about Dharma, Satyam, rules and regulations. And uh, the younger generation will try not to follow it or somehow come out of it. But if you see in the Rama, in Rama, it is generally the opposite way. Dasharatha is coming out of his dharma. His dharma is he should protect his son, how can he send his son to forest? Similarly, if you see Kausalya, she is telling that I will leave even Dasharatha and come along with you to the forest. Likewise, if you see Lakshmana, he is speaking wrong about his father, he is speaking wrong about his Bharata or his brother Bharata. So if you see all the people in Ramayana, even Sukriva, he doesn't, he, there are places where Sukriva leaves dharma and he speaks few things. So if you see in the entire Ramayana, it is only Ramachandra Prabhu who is always following Dharma and making sure that all the people around him also follow Dharma. So that is why Kausalya Devi says it is generally the older people who will be very cautious about Dharma rules and regulations. But it is the opposite here Rama. We are trying to somehow come out of Dharma. We are trying somehow that we can leave Dharma and do activities regarding our emotions because all these things that are happening around is because of their emotions towards Ramachandra Prabhu, their love towards Ramachandra Prabhu, their bhakti towards Ramachandra Prabhu. But even in that situation, if you see that person cannot be moved or cannot be changed, Ramachandra Prabhu is still making Dasharatha to follow Dharma. Dasharatha, first he asks, he, he, there is no where, place where Dasharatha has clearly mentioned Rama should go to the forest. There is never a term for him in Ramayana. It is only Kaikeyi who is constantly telling it. And our Guru Maharaj puts that in a beautiful way. You say, Kaikeyi was really confident that if these words are spoken to Ramachandra Prabhu relating his father to the Dharma and the Satyam that he follows, he will definitely do those activities. Because if Rama has been like Kamsa, you imagine such a set. If Rama is a child like Kamsa in Bhagavatam, he puts his own father in jail and he crowns himself. That is Kamsa's quality. If Ramachandra Prabhu was a child like Kamsa, then would have a Kaikai dare to ask those two boons there. So, the confidence and the courage that comes to Kaikai is because of Rama's qualities. Because Rama will definitely accept he will go. And our Guru Maharaj mentions one more thing and there is no written statement. We generally ask for a return statement, like even if there is a small amount, we borrow and give, lend it and give it to another person, like give him a statement. Write and give, I will return it to you, I will accept it from you, everything we need paper, right? But in Ramayana, there is no paper related at all. Nowhere, Dasharatha could have clearly escaped by mentioning that I didn't give KKE those two boons at all. Because who has seen it? It is, a, it is a personal conversation between KKE and Dasharatha which was happening in an earlier battlefield where Dasharatha was fighting. So he could have clearly evaded it by mentioning ah, I am not Could have mentioned it clearly later. Right? I didn't say all those words. Simply this KKE Kai Kai is blabbering. So he could have used those words and would have come out of it. He didn't do so. Even Ramachandra Prabhu when KKE was asking Ramachandra Prabhu that mentioning to Ramachandra Prabhu that Dasharatha has given these two bones there were only three people in the room. If you see Valmiki Ramana, it is Dasharatha who is going down, it is Kaikeyi who is speaking the words, and it is only Ramachandra Prabhu who is listening, and there is Lakshmana who is standing next to him. There are four people. And Lakshmana is the person who is always waiting that Ramachandra Prabhu should be crowned. Don't worry, I will send father and mother to the jail. So that is what Lakshmana speaks. He says that I am ready to, but he will not do it. Because the person who showcases, because he, he speaks like Kamsa, Kamsa, he mentions that I will send my father and mother to them because of crowning Ramachandra Prabhu. He is speaking those words to in front of Kausalya, he is speaking in front of Ramachandra Prabhu, but he will not dare to do it. Because the Dharma Swarupam there will refrain us, will not allow us to do those actions. They can speak, but the Samidhyam of Ramachandra Prabhu which is there will even change those people having those mentalities. 
and uh, you don't need to question about Lakshmanata. So he is speaking. There are only four people there. He could have easily evaded it or he could have easily cancelled it by mentioning that they were born only to those three people. So immediately Rama, Ramachandra Prabhu could have gone for other options. Uh, he could have mentioned that all his uh, father and uh, mother should be arrested. He could have clearly finished the situation within that room. But he didn't do so. He accepts. He says, why, why are you mentioning that Dasharatha has asked me to go to the forest for 14 years and Bharata should be crowned? Mannavan pani endragil num pani marukpano yan vinnavan petra selvam ariyanen petra dandro. This is what Ambaramayana mentions that Mannavan pani, why you should Rama, there should be a statement from Dasharatha that Rama should go to forest even if you say I am ready to go. So he gives uh, that authority to Kaikeyi Devi also to mention that. So that being the case, he, does, he is not seeing any difference between Kausalya Mata and his stepmother that is Kaikeyi Mata here. He is not seeing any difference. That is also a great dharma. So he is saying, again, Vinnavan Petra Salam. Generally, the property issues happens between the Munnavan and the Vinnavan, that is the elder brother and the younger brother. And here, Ramachandra Prabhu, with his big heart, he is ready to give it to his brother Vinnavan Petra Salam, Adiyanayan Petra Salam. So even if my younger brother is obtaining the kingdom, it is also mine only. So what is the difference there? So if that quality is there in a person, then he is a Mahatma. That is, that is mentioned by Bharata in Ayodhya Kanda. Bharata mentions to Ramachandra Prabhu, he sees these two qualities. At this adverse situation, a person will get angry and he will be shouting and he will be doing actions which can't be controlled. This is the first one. Or the next one, if he is not able to do anything, he will go inside his house, close the doors and he will be starting to cry. But Ramachandra Prabhu didn't do both. And this is mentioned by Bharata and he asks, I feel that you are not human at all. There is a first instance in Ramayana where a person has had the courage to mention that Ramachandra Prabhu is not human. Amaropama Sattvaspam Mahatma Sukhya Sankaraha Sarvatnyaha Sarvasakshincha Buddhiman Chapi Raga These are the terms which can be equated to Ishwara Sarvatnyaha Sarvasakshi All these terms are adjectives for Brahma or all these terms are adjectives for Bhagavan Those are used by Lakshmana there He mentions Amaropama Sattvaspam You are not Amara You are not a normal human being at all because a human being can't react in this way in these situations. Even in these adverse situations, how can I see a smile in your face? That's what Kambanata Alva records. He says, Andralanda Sendamarayu Vendalama. So, he is searching for like, this another place where he mentions, even if it is Andralanda Sendam, that is the lotus that has been blossomed on that day morning, and the evening uh, it will go dry. But so, he mentions, yeah, yeah, Lotus that has been captured in a photo. So, Pugai Aditta Tamarai Pol he mentions. So, Pugai means Pugai Padam. So, yes, if a photograph, a blossomed lotus is taken, a photograph of that lotus is taken, then how it will be always blossomed, right? That is how Ramachandra Prabhu's face is. So, if you see in Vishnu Sahasranama, Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada takes this place. For Sumukhaya Namaha, there is a Nama in uh, thousand, thousand Namans, which is uh, Sumukhaya Namaha. And for Sumukhaya Namaha, he is not any big statements. He is mentioning that look at the face of Ramachandra Prabhu, who is going to the forest. So that is what Sumukhaya Namaha is. Because he will be happy in happy situations. But even in those adverse situations, he is smiling. So that shows the quality and the dharma. Because if that person is so dharmic, he will not be affected by any of those things. And the nature, the happenings, the surroundings, everything will modify them for this person to follow dharma. So dharma atma no gunavato. He is giving his kingdom to his brother. He is not scolding his father. He is not scolding his mother. He is not taking any actions against them. And when he is going to the father, all the Ayodhi people are following him. He would have used this as the best situation and emotional. Uh, he would have created a big scene there, go in Amarayate, Vipandar, in Ajit. He would have turned the mob against the kingdom. And if you see in history, all these things happen. And Ramachandra Prabhu didn't uh, say so, or didn't do so. And he goes to an extent of mentioning that if you have the, sorry, if you have the love that you have for me, should be shown to Bharata also, is what he mentions. So, so the same same love and respect that you show to me to Bharata also. That is what he mentioned. So look at his guna, so look at his dharma when he is going 
and to the father, he left his father, he left his mother, he left all the things there. And he is going and standing in Singhivera Puram for his friend Guha, that too he is an hunter. Why should he give importance there? Because he is already in lot of issues and problems and he is going and waiting there to meet Guha. And if you see in Sabari Moksha's place, nowhere when Ramachandra Prabhu is speaking to Sabari, he doesn't speak a word about Sita there or doesn't speak a word about the problem that he is undergoing now. At that juncture, you should have spoken, right? If you have an issue, even though it's a, a person who is not related to that problem, out of it, you should be there. I am having this problem, so and so, this and that, everything will be mentioned. But you should mention, right? When he is speaking to somebody, he is entirely a different person. He is not speaking any of his problems to somebody at all. That too, when he is first meeting Sugriva, after gaining Sugriva's confidence, and after Sugriva mentioning about his issues several times, Finally, Sukhiva asks the Ramachandra Prabhu, Monga Kadi, you have not mentioned that all. And Sukhiva is repeatedly mentioned. And I don't know how Ramachandra Prabhu had that patience to listen to those stories of Sukhiva at that time. Though they are friends, he could have lost his control, right? But never he did. So that shows his gunas, that shows his qualities, that shows the dharma in which he is standing. So dharma atma no guna. And in Yudha Gandham, if you see, in Yudha Gandham, he is killing Ravana. If a king eliminate, eliminates another king, then the entire property of Lanka is Ramachandra Prabhu's. <coughs> he doesn't enter Lanka. He doesn't see what is there in it. He doesn't, he doesn't enter at all. He, he, he doesn't enter Krishna also. He is, he is the person who kills Vali and gives the kingdom to Sudhiva. All the rights are Ramachandra Prabhu's. So he can directly enter inside, he can say all the instructions that he need to do, all the things that he need to change because it is his property. He has only killed Vali, he has killed the opposite king and he has claimed the kingdom now, which he is going to give to Sukhdeva. So he has all the rights to do all the things there, right? He never enters. He never enters Lanka, he has not seen anything there. So what he should do? Even in Krishna Vataram, since I want to glorify Rama here, there will be few places I will be reducing Krishna's Gunas, but uh, uh, don't feel bad. <laughs> where, if you see in Krishna place, where in Dashavastandam, Upurvadha, sorry, in Uttaradha, where Krishna is fighting battles, he takes all those jewels, he takes all those things. In Naragasuras, Vadham, everything Krishna takes. Why? Because it is a, it is a rule of a king. Because those property becomes, uh, becomes his property, so he is taking everything. But Ramachandra Prabhu doesn't take. He says, Janani, Janma Bhumishya, Swargadapi Gariyasi. My homeland, the place I am born, that is more important to me, and he immediately leaves. But and, uh, when Anjaneya Swami asks uh, Ramachandra Prabhu that let me go and inform Sita Mata that Ravana has been killed, and uh, Ramachandra Prabhu, victory for Ramachandra Prabhu, let me go and inform her. You know what uh, Ramachandra Prabhu says? Get permission from Vibhishana. That is what he meant. Vibhishana gave Rajya in that. He will put that down. He is yet to hand over the kingdom to Vibhishana. He meant to get Vibhishana's permission. So, Asuma Vaivartha, this is just not the things that he is speaking. The qualities are inbuilt in him that we can't change him at all. That is why Maricha says, Ramo Vigrahavan Dharma. I am still having a doubt whether Maricha has really understood or not. Because that is so great, the qualities of Ramachandra Prabhu are so great, that is why Valmiki Bhagavan is really keen that he should not show Ramachandra Prabhu as Bhagavan at all. He should never show Ramachandra Prabhu as Bhagavan. So that is the theme of Valmiki. And if you see Kamba Ramayana or Tulasi Das Ramayana, any other Ramayana, in the beginning itself they will mention that he is Bhagavan. That happens in Krishna Vatan. All the Lila start with Bhagavan Abhi, Bhagavan Abhi, Bhagavan Abhi. So initially it is when there is nowhere to question Krishna at all. Even if you question, it is not a problem for him. Even for Rama, it is not a problem. But he still questions Ramachandra Prabhu. Because all the activities that he has done are in the form of a, form of a human. Even in the end, he mentions Atmanam, Mamsham, Anye, Ramam, Dasharatatmaja. Nowhere in Ramayanam or Valmiki Bhagavan would have mentioned Ramachandra Prabhu is Bhagavan. There is no clear words that mention it at all. So that is why Dharmatma no Gunavatu. There are another, other texts and other uh, uh, patas which mention here Dharmatma no Bhagavatu. There are other patas there, but I feel that those are not Valmiki's terms. 
because there is a change in it. Why? Because Valmiki will never say Ramachandra Prabhu as Bhagavan. He will never mention because Shoya Tam Vai Naraha, I want a person, I want a human with all the qualities that even when Ishwara or Deva comes and meets, they should be astonished. Kasya Vidhyati Devascha Jata Roshasya Samyuge. When he gets angry, even the Devas and Devatas should be afraid of it. That is what Valmiki Bhagavan's 16th question is. Kasya Vidhyati Devascha Jata Roshasya Samyuge. And if you see, Ramachandra Prabhu has cleanly taken his charitra in that way. So that is why he Brahmadeva mentions Dharmatmano, Gunavato, Loke, Ramasya, Dhimataha. The two things that highlight, that enlight Ramachandra Prabhu are his dharmas and his gunas. So you please uh, give that in, elaborately you give all those gunas, that is what he is mentioning here. And Brahmadeva uh, disappears from there. And Valmiki Bhagavan is starting to write Ramayanam, Tadupakata, Samasa, Sandhi Yogam, Samamadhuropa, Natartha, Vakya Vardham. Raghurda Charitam Muni Pranitam Dashashira Sastya Vadham Vishama Yudha So this shloka starts the Ramayana and completes the Ramayana So the entire shloka time that has taken by all me to write Ramayana is this one shloka So Tadu Upagata, all those words are coming to Ramachandra Prabhu Because they want to be a part of Ramachandra Prabhu's Gunas So only then those words will be really highlighted so for that that Upagata Samasa, so all those words are coming and he has written it beautifully, he has written with uh, all the beautiful terms and beautiful descriptions are mentioned and it has great meaning also. So if you see, for Valmiki Bhagavan, uh, there are other Kavis or other uh, Rishis who have written lot of Shastras or lot of Kavyas. But if you see, for Valmiki Bhagavan, for him everything is Ramayana. So there is no other Granta that Valmiki Bhagavan has written. And he encapsulates, encapsulates what all are required for a, and all other Shastra of code, he has encapsulated in, in Paramayana. So, but you have to notice one more thing, Valmiki has not studied any of those. He has not gone to school or he has not gone to Parasala, he has not studied or learnt any of those. And he brings all the dharmas. Because next to Veda, if you need to know a Shastra, then it is uh, Ramayana. It has emerged even before Sanskrit grammar came into existence. So Ramayana was present at that time even before Sanskrit grammar came into existence. So if, a, if Pani is the person who has written Sanskrit grammar and if that person wants to write the grammar, he should have taken reference from Ramayana only then he should have uh, written the grammar in, uh, that is required for the language. So it is so old and there is uh, no low words or lowly words that are mentioned in Ramayana. This shows the time in which it happened. Even in Mahabharatam, there are those terms. If you see in Mahabharatam, there is a place where uh, Duchasana calls Bhima as Gau Gau. So he calls him that you are Gau. Meaning that at that time, Duchasana has considered that Gau is the lower animal to human. Otherwise, we will not be scolding people with those words, right? So, why we are scolding other people as dog or cat or cow or something else? Because we consider for humans those are low animals. Consider comparing to humans. But in Ramayana there is no place at all. So, in the time of Ramayana, all the people and all the jivas or all the creatures were considered equal. So, that shows how old it should be. So, Valmiki Bhagavan completes writing Ramayana and he should teach it to someone, right? So, he is searching for a person. It is not needed at all for him. And he has found the apt sishyas or the apt person. If a person is holding a property, then the property will be going to his son or daughter, right? So, the next generation. Likewise, after writing Ramayana, Valmiki is searching for a sishya who is present in there in his ashram only. It is Ramachandra Prabhu's sons. So, it is Lava and Kusha. So to them, he teaches the entire Ramayana. So they have learnt all the Vedas. So after completing the Vedas, they should read the Upanishads. And after completing the Upanishads, they will come for the Indiyasas and Puranas. So that is the way the Sanatana Dharma course can be framed. So that being the case, they have completed uh, Vedas now. They have completed Upanishads, that is Vedanta. Now they have come to Itihasa, that is Ramayana. And at that time, only this Itihasa will exist. So they have taught, they have learned all the 24 shlokas, 24,000 shlokas and Valmiki Bhagavan asked them uh, to go and give lectures on Ramayana. So if you see, even at the time when Ramachandra Prabhu was present, all the people there were listening to Ramayana. 
Paramatma, I have a lot of work at my home. Uh, it's very difficult for me to come. They will be mentioning, if you want, I will be coming for 10 minutes. Or I will just uh, come at the initial 10 minutes, then I will leave. You bring something on the table, and uh, they will be the person to leave the diaries uh, of the last, the auditorium of the last. So that is the way in which those two kids are telling and uh, Lakshma is really mesmerized, is really happy to listen to all these one because uh, they want to separate Ramachandra Prabhu, that is what they are for, right? So they are really happy on hearing all those things and uh, the only thing that is needed for them now is Ramachandra Prabhu should listen to Ramayana. So he should listen to it, right? So and uh, all the three brothers and all other people in Ayodhya from the royal family are afraid to mention this to Ramachandra Prabhu. That is the way it is the story goes. So he is a Gambhira Usha. So you can't just go and talk to him. So even Bharata, even Lakshmana, even Shatrubhana are having that figure, uh, having that fear because Ramachandra Prabhu is such a person. And one day when he was standing in the balcony and uh, Bharata was standing next to him, he hears a beautiful uh, ganam of Ramayana himself. And he listens to it and comes to know that it is his story that is being uh, spoken by them there. And immediately he asks Bharata what is happening there, so what is the thing, why I am hearing this song, so everything he is asking. Ratya Suraja Margeshu Dadarisha Bharata Agraja. So Bharata is standing next to him, uh, Bharata is so happy. Because this is the opportunity to mention that those two kids are uh, speaking Ramayana in detail and it is really beautiful to hear from them. And the uh, Bharata prayers to Ramachandra Prabhu that Ramachandra Prabhu should also listen to Ramayana now. And uh, Ramachandra Prabhu will not listen. Why? Because for a person listening to his own story, there is no greater, uh, lower thing than listening to our own, own praises and own stories. So that is what we have to do. So that is high qualities. So Ramachandra Prabhu, that is my story. They are going to speak about my story. How can I listen to my own story? So it is not possible. So Rathyasu Raja Margeshu, Dhadarisha Bharata Agraja. And then Ramachandra, because of Bharata's insistence and prayers, Ramachandra Prabhu accepts that I am going to do an Ashwamele Yaga. And when Ashwamele Yaga is done, because there is a particular time in which the Yaga should be performed. It will not be done for 24 hours or it will not be done for the entire duration of the day. It is not possible. So there are a few times where the Yaga should be done and the other time will be free. So generally if you see, all the Puranas or Itihasas, uh, their Arangetram happens in these situations only. When a uh, few Rishis are doing Yaga or Ednya in their rest time, they will be listening to Puranas and Hidikasas and that is also a dharma that should be done. That is a rule that is part of an idea. So that being the case, Ramachandra Prabhu feels that let me listen, let me listen to this Ramayana, that junction. So I will listen when that Ashwamedha Idya is happening. Why now Ramachandra Prabhu accepted to listen to Ramana, his own Charitra? He said he told I will not be listening. And what is the reason that made Ramachandra Prabhu to listen now? Because he himself doesn't know the full Ramayana. Ramachandra Prabhu doesn't know. When he started from Ayodhya and he went to the forest, he doesn't know the happenings in Ayodhya. When uh, Anjanaya Swami went to uh, uh, Lanka and met Sita Mata, uh, uh, Ramachandra Prabhu doesn't know what uh, was the situation. Just he heard through the words of Anjanaya Swami, but he, does, he hasn't seen what is happening, what has happened there. So that being the case, he wants to listen to the entire Ramayana in Zuni. And uh, there is one more thing that is present here. There is an accusation on Sita Mata that is being told by a person in Ramachandra Prabhu's kingdom. So if this Ramayana is staged or arranged and if all the people in the kingdom listen to it, they will come to know about the true quality of Sita Mata, her sacrifice and Ramachandra Prabhu's sacrifice for the people. So now it is a big judgment day for Ramachandra Prabhu for those nine days. So he makes his people to give the judgment. So after listening to Rama Gunas along with him, so they should decide whether if Ramachandra Prabhu can accept Sita Mata back or if it's not the case, then they could really understand how Sita Mata is, what Sita Mata is or what Ramachandra Prabhu is. So this will become an opportunity for those people to come to know the real qualities of Sita and Rama. Otherwise because the doubt here is because they have not seen it. They have not seen the Agni Pradesha. If Agni Pradesha is done again and again, then it will become magic. Nobody will uh, accept it. 
Because if those things are done once, then it will have respect. So if we just do it again and again, there is no respect for it at all. If you see in Mahabharatam, Krishna sources Vishwarupa uh, when he has gone as a messenger to Duryodhana's kingdom and he is gone there to Hastinapuram, he shows the Vishwarupa form which he showed to Arjuna. And you know what? Dur Duryodhana says this is all magic. Even I can show it if I have that capacity. You can't have that capacity at all. He is not believing it. Dhritarashtra gets eyes on seeing the Vishwarupam of Krishna there. He is able to, he is witnessing it with the naked eye, not the, the special eye that is given by uh, Krishna to Arjuna in the case in Bhagavad Gita. It is not so. He gets his naked eye back. He is able to see it, he is able to visualize it. And he prays to Krishna in the condition well where a new Bhagavanta. So I, I am witness, I have witnessed your visual rupam. So more than that, that, there is nothing recommended for me. Say, the three people make me blind. So that is what his prayer is. So even if people show their greatness, uh, they won't be able, if they show it again and again, it won't be able for other people to accept it. They will just uh, say that it is just magic or is there, that's why it is just something they can give as answers. So Sita, Sita Devi can't do up the relation again. Ramachandra Guru will not say so also. So that being the case, this Ramayana that happens here, because these are words of a great Rishi, Valmiki Maharishi's words. So it has authentication and people at that time, they are really sattvic. That is why they can understand these gunas and these qualities. If that basis of sattva guna or bhakti or that vairagyam is not there, then it is very difficult to understand these things at all, literally. So, that being the case, Ramachandra Prabhu uses this as an opportunity uh, so that he can uh, make the people realize all the qualities of Sita and his own. So, that is the reason he has accepted for this uh, Ramayana Katha to happen and he wants to listen to it directly. Not because of his own Charitra, he wants to know the sacrifice that other people have made for the sake of Ramachandra Prabhu. The sacrifice of Lakshmana, the sacrifice of Bharata, the sacrifice of Shatruguna, Sita Mata, Anjaniya Swami and go on. There are people who have sacrificed for Ramachandra Prabhu and the person who has inspired, inspired them is Ramachandra Prabhu. It is his sacrifice, the first sacrifice. So we should all see, so Ramachandra Prabhu wants to feel it. Ramachandra Prabhu wants to listen to it, so that is the reason he gives uh, authentication that let uh, the Rama Gunas uh, happen in that Ashwamedha Yaga. So immediately these two kids are invited and these two kids come there. So all the people are, uh, the entire Ayodhi is there, there is a big auditorium that is being accepted and uh, Ramachandra Prabhu is sitting as the Ajnasarya, the king there and uh, these two kids are, sur are surrounded by people uh, entirely and they are standing in the middle. So they should have some fear or they should be afraid. All the people there are uh, great Dhamma ones only. So that being the case, these two kids should be afraid. Not, they, have not, they, you know, they are not showing it at all. It they are not having it at all. Imamuni Parthiva Lakshanam Vidav Pushira Vauchaiva Maha Tapasvinavu Mama Pita Bhutika Ramga Chakshade Mahanu Bhavam Chantam Nibhavadata So on seeing these two kids, Ramachandra Prabhu gives the signal that let them start it. So these two kids start the Ramacharitra, Sapaswas, Jayanata, that is the way which they start. Imauni, Parthiva, Lakshana, Vidav, they are looking, Ramachandra Prabhu is staring now. He is understanding on seeing these two kids. They are not looking like uh, Rishi Kumaras or Rishi Putras. They are looking like uh, sons of a king. So Imauni, they are, they are dressed up as uh, Rishis. But if you see uh, the Lakshana that is present in their body, it is Parthiva Lakshana and Vidav, they are looking as things. Kushilao, Chaiva, Maha, Tapasvino, and the way in which they render uh, the Rama Gunas, it is evident that they are great uh, Tapasvis, it seems. Kushilao, Chaiva, Maha, Tapasvino. And if you see, initially Ramachandra Prabhu told, I will not be listening. Then he accepted. Then he came and uh, took the topmost position uh, in that entire arena. Mama Pita Bhuti Karamta Chakshate. And uh, when these two kids start to narrate Ramayana, Ramachandra Prabhu is not able to sit at the top. So if you see, after two hours, he would have come down two steps. And again, after two hours, he would have come two steps down again. And finally, at the end of the day, he was sitting in front of those two kids. Mama Pita Bhuti Karamta Chakshate. 
Because Buddha Dasa mentions Gana Rola is what the quality of Bhagavan is. So whenever there is Sankirtana, whenever there is Gana, immediately uh, Bhagavan will be pushed to be pulled to it itself. So Gana Rola is what he is. So that being the case, then these two kids, they render Ramayana. Ramasadra who is not able to sit there. And he has to respect the way which they are telling that though they are two small kids, he is entirely respecting him and he is mentioning Mama Pita Bhuti Karam Prajakshat. He feels that if there are people who are able to tell my qualities and guna in this way, and if there is a person who can write my qualities and gunas in this way, then I am ready to take several other avatars also. So Mama Pita Bhuti Karam Prajakshat. So, our Guru Maharaj mentions, so this is the place where Ramachandra Prabhu decided that he will be making, taking several other avatars because there is a person called Valkiki to record it and there are people like Yamagusha to tell it. So, that being the case, why should I not make several other avatars? I am ready to do even more. So, Mamapita Bhutikaram Prajakshade and he says, thus that this Rama Katha will give auspiciousness to Ramachandra Prabhu Sikhs. Mama Pita Bhutika. It will also uh, do great wonders for me also. So if you mention, if you see at the end of Valmiki Ramayam, it is mentioned that Balam Vishnoho Pravardhata. So the Palashruti of Vidhiharas or Puranas or the Dharmic activities that we do will not be providing auspiciousness just to us. It will be providing greatness to the deity that is present to us. So he says, Bhalam Vishnoho Pravardhata. If Ramayana is chanted, if Ramayana is spoken, if Ramayana lecture happens, then the first thing that will happen is this deity that is present there, its sanityam will increase its sense. So Ramasta Prabhu is authenticating it in the beginning itself. So Mamapita Bhuti Karam is going to give great shreyas for me also. Mahanubhas Charitam Nibhodata. Tatashtutau Ramavacha Prachoditau Ahayaka Marga Vidana Sampara Sachapi Ramaha Parishat Gatashanaihi Bhubu Shaya Sattamana Bhubu Vaha So Ramasat Guru is really happy to listen to it and now Lavan Kusha Sthat Ramaguna Ramacharita Oshalo Namamudikaha Sthito Janapado Mahan Nirishta Sarayu Dhire Prabhuta Dhana Dhanyavan Ayodhya Namana Dari Tatra Shuddha Manuna Manare Drena Yahuri Nirmita Swayam. So, this is the simple of Ramayana. Initially, uh, the present story is told, and the entire Rama Katha becomes the flashback. So, these two kids are narrating the entire story to Ramachandra Prabhu himself. Kosalo Namamita. So, this shloka describes the kingdom Kosala. So, Kosala, the word meaning is Ka plus Kushala. So, Kha means a peacocks. Ushala means a place which has densely populated peacocks. So, for peacocks to stay in a place, then there should be good water source. Then only then peacocks will be staying. So, if you see in Arvas Vasaram, he mentions about Sri Rangam in that way. Vandinam Uranam Solai, Mailinam Anam Solai, Kondalmi Anam Solai. So, Solai means it is a fertile land. It has a good water. It has good rain, it has good sunshine, all the things there are really good. So, if Koshala is such a kingdom, so look how that place would be, how fertile that would be. That is what it mentions. So, Koshalo Nama Mudita. And if a, if a land is so fertile with all the resources, then how will the people be? Mudita, they are very happy. Spitaha, and it has all the samriddhi, all the things are uh, great in number. So, Spito, Janapado, Mahan, so all the people are happy. Nivishta Sarayu, and the main water source for the people there is the Sarayu Ida. Prabhuta, Dhana, Dhanyavan. So, there are harvest, lot of harvest is happening, and because of that harvest, they are obtaining lot of money. So, Prabhuta, Dhana, Dhanyavan, Ayodhya, Namanagari, and the capital of that Koshala Desham is Ayodhya. So, na yodhum shakyade iti ayodhya. So, ayodhya means a place that can never be conquered. So, there is no people who is capable of coming and fighting against the king of ayodhya and winning that kingdom. So, na yodhum shakyade. No one has ever tried and no one has ever succeeded also. So, if you want to compare ayodhya with any other place, there is only one place in the world. 
and it is mentioned in Vedas, Devanam Pur Ayodhya. And that Ayodhya is why Kunta So if you see in all the Itihasas and Puranas, even Brahma Loka is captured. Brahma Loka can be captured, Deva Loka can be captured, all those places are captured, but nowhere you can see that an Asura or a Rakshasa came to Vaikunta and captured Vaikunta. That is not at all possible. Because it is beyond all the beliefs. So that being the case, no one has come and fought for a battle to obtain Vaikunta. Similarly, no one has done it in the case of Ayodhya. That is why his name is Dasharatha. So his Ratha can travel in all the ten directions. So, eight directions up top and bottom. So, there are ten directions totally. So, he can go anywhere, he has permit anywhere. So, all the people there will be welcoming him wherever he goes. So, that is why his name is Dasharatha. Dasharatha has another name, it is called Pakshiratha also. So, it mentions Garuda also in another case. So, that being the case, Dasharatha is a king who is welcomed everywhere in the world. So that being the case, who can come and conquer? Who will be having a thought of coming and conquering Ayodhya? So Ayodhya it can never be conquered. Ayodhya na managari tatrasin loka vishuta manuna maname indre na ya puri nirmita swayam. So this history of Ayodhya is mentioned here. So Ayodhya was first constructed by Vaivasvata Manu. So that is the seventh Manu. When Vaivasvata Manu once he went to Brahmaloka. When he went there, there he saw Brahmadeva doing puja to Ranganaja Swami. So on seeing that Ranganaja Swami, he immediately his bhakti increases towards him and he gets Ranganaja Swami from Brahmadeva and he brings him to Ayodhya. And Ramachandra Prabhu gives Ranganaja Swami to Vibhishana, which is now present in Sri Ram. So initially, for, for all the greatness that is associated with Ayodhya, it is because of Ranganaja Swami. So Ranganaja was there initially. And he comes to Sri Ranga later. So, Manuna Manavendrena Yapuri Dirmidasu. So, Vaivasvata Manu is the person who has constructed this kingdom, this constructed this city, and it is so beautiful, it seems, and the person who is ruling is Dasharatha. And now, uh, the greatness of the land is being mentioned. So, the greatness of the people there are mentioned. Na Kundali, Na Mabuki, Na Sarvi, Na Namrishto Nanu Lithango Nasukandhasya Vidhyate So the shloka mentions Nan So it is not there, it is not there, no, Nahi It is not that way it is, He is mentioning the shlokas in negativity Because all the things there are positive At least there is shloka behind <laughs> So while describing the Ayodhya He is mentioning as Na Akundali So all the people there are wearing uh, Kundalam so all the people, whether it is male, whether it is female, all the people, na kundari, na mokuti, so all the people are wearing a crown. Na kundari, na mokuti, na sarakti. Only during marriages uh, we will buy garlands in our family. But if you see all the people in Ayodhya are garlands, they eat it. Na sarakti, na alpa bhogavan. Kamiya saapradhe karayana. So what are you going to cook? Kanji, Upma, or never nausha. So it's going to be a big feast only. So na alpa bhogavan. So alpa means kami. Na alpa bhogavan. So he's bringing positivity to a negative term. Because at least let the shloka be in such a way. But the people there are really happy and really fulfilled and really content. Na mushto, na anuritango, na sugandhasta vidyate. So all the people, uh, they wear uh, scents it seems, uh, they wear uh, chandanam it seems. So all the people are really happy and content. Content because of uh, not the riches are less. The riches are more so that they are content. Okay, this is for me and me. Everything is in surplus, so they are content. Kaschin, Narova, Nariva, Nashima, Napya, Upavan. So if you want, uh, if you are getting an audience uh, from Ayodhya, Kanna Muri we can accept. He gives two reasons for that. Na Ashrima, all the people are rich. Na Arupavan, all the people are beautiful. So two first primary two criteria are satisfied. So Adaka Rupala, yes. So if they are rich, yes. So na shriman, na pya rupavan, drashtum, shakyam, ayodhya, ayam, na pya rajanya bhakti man. This is the greatest thing which will be absent in all the places. Na rajanya bhakti man. So all the people have rajabhakti. They are devoted towards their ruler. 
I feel this is a difficult quality now. Drashtum Shakyam Ayodhya Aya Nāpi Rājanya Bhakti Māna Nā Kaskaraha Nā Kshudraha No one is hungry there, no there is no thief at all there. So there is no nāstika at all there. Nā Anāstika, all the people have āstika systems, all the people have Deva Bhakti, all the people have Dharma Bhakti, all the people have Raja Bhakti. So look at the civilization at that time. How fertile the land is. How fertile the people are, how happy the people are, and the reason for this entire fertility and the fertile land is because of the Saraiko river that is going there. So, water source. And for that water source to be full of water, then they need regular rains. So, rains is not in our control. So, land is not fertile, are, uh, people are really happy, those things are in our control. But for rains to occur regularly, you need a Deva Anupulya. So, on for the Deva Amulya, blessings from the Deva should be there, then the people should be dharmic. So, if the people are dharmic, the people can be dharmic only if the king is dharmic. So, all the things go under points to the king. If the king is so dharmic, Yatha Raja, Tatha Pratha. So, if Dasharatha, since that king is so dharmic, truthful, righteous, the people are dharmic. Since the people are dharmic and they are following their rules and they are following the way in which they should live, the devas are happy. Since the devas are happy, they are getting regular rain. Then they are having regular rain, uh, the water the sources or uh, they are having regular water also. So because of that water, the land is fertile. So this shows how that civilization, civilization was there during the time of Ramachandra Prabhu at that time, at that yuga. So that being the case, and Dasharatha is ruling in such a way, he has eight ministers and two Ritviks to control his entire kingdom and he is governing in such a way and it is mentioned Tam Satyanamam Dridha Toranargalam Grihai Vichitrai Rupa Shobhitam Shivam Purim Ayodhyam Rishaharusha Sankulam Sashasavai Shatrasamohi Patihi If you see, there is a Granta called Amara Kosham or Nirandu which is like a Prasaras for Sanskrit. So if you see, there are several names to be provided. So he mentions another name for Ayodhya. So Ayodhya has several names. It is Ayodhya, uh, it is Satyapuri, it is Saketapuri, it has several names. And it mentions here as Tam Satyanama. So that name Ayodhya is correct. The name Ayodhya is true. Tam Satyanama. Because no one has come for it. No one has uh, tried for a uh, fight or a war with the kingdom of Ayodhya, so Tam Satyanama, Dhridha Dora Nargala, and Valmiki uh, Maharishi gives a detailed description of that land. Full of Ayodhya. So now we are seeing such a uh, country is developed, so the transportation is great, so the people, uh, the commute is uh, great. So all those things you are mentioning here, all these things are there in Ayodhya. So the houses are uh, really beautiful. So, Dhridha Toralam Galam, Dhrihai Vichitrai, so each house is different in this. Upa Shobhitam Shivam, all the people are really rich, all the people have a lot of Samriddhi. Dhridha Toralam, so all the houses are always decorated in this. Dhridha Toralam Galam, they have beautiful separation, they have beautiful land, they have beautiful garden. Uh, the, all the roads and all the streets are really clean, everything is mentioned here. And uh, if you want a comparison for Ayodhya. So you need a comparison, right? So here, uh, Balmiti Bhagavan mentions Puri, Ayodhya, Mri, Sahasra, Sankula, Sashasavi, Shakra, Samo, Mahipatihi. So the way in which Sashasra is ruling the kingdom is equivalent uh, to Indra ruling, ruling Amaravati. That is what the But there is uh, one difference here. So if you see the case of Svartaloka or Amaravati, there are situations where it has been captured by Mahabali has captured the Svartalokam. There are a lot of other Asuras who have captured the Svartalokam. But if you see in the case of Ayodhya, no one has captured it. And whenever there is an issue for Indra who is living in Amravati, Dasharatha goes for his aid and help. But no way the reverse happens. So that since there are no one has come to conquer this kingdom, so there is no need of any help from any other ruler. And if Dasharatha needs some help, he has the right and he has the ticket to go to Devendra and get his help, which he has not obtained till now because it is not needed. So, Dasashari, Shakra Samo, Mahipati. If you want, you can compare Dasharatha and Ayodhya to Devaloka and Devendra, but all he mentions that it is superior to Devaloka himself. 
So there are situations where Deva Loka has been conquered, but Ayodhya is not so. So Sashasana is Akrasamo Mahi Patihi. So he is really content, he is really happy, there is no issues for Dasarata at all. So that is the final conclusion till now. So if a person doesn't have any issues, he can't be human at all. So at least he must mention some difficulty or problem, some desire in his life. If he doesn't have any desire, he is jnani. That's it. So then there is only one person and there, there is no comparison for that person. It is Bhagavan. Kurayundru illa ada govinda. There is only person who can be without any problems or issues or sufferings and it is Bhagavan. And that too, if he comes to this world, he will change. <laughs> he will be in the way this we are. So, for Dasharatha, if he is so happy, so content, and he is living a luxurious and royal life, then he can't be human at all, right? There should be some issues for him, right? So, then Valmiki Bhagavan is mentioned, he mentioned he is not having children at all. So, there is no one to rule the kingdom after Dasharatha, and he is mentioning the age of Dasharatha, Dasharatha is 60,000 years old. <laughs> Till now, he is not having any children. So, he is doing lot, he is doing lot of dharmic activities to obtain a child. But it is not possible with asya chayivam prabhavasya dharmagnasya mahanpanaha sukartam tapya mahanasya nasit vamshakara sudaha There is no child for him. So there is no one to rule the kingdom after Dasarada, so that is the only issue for him. So what he will be doing, he is doing lot of dharmic activities, he is doing lot of dhanam, dharma, lot of pujas, lot of yagas. All those things are performed by him but he is not getting the desired results. So again, he is trying to do one more dharmic activity, for that he is approaching his guru, uh, that is uh, Vasishta Maharishi. And one day in his court, he is speaking to Vasishta Maharishi, that there is no issue for me at all. I am really happy, but there is only one problem. So I have been ruling this kingdom for 60,000 years. And he is mentioning, he is mentioned in Kamba Ramayam, Alubada Ayiram Andum Mandura Uru Pagai Bodukki Ulagai Ombi Nen Pilidumu Uru Urai Illa There is no problem for me at all. For 16,000 years, I have lived a happy life. There is no one who is coming and fighting against me or there is no enemies for me. So there are no problems at all. Pilidu Uru Urai Illa There is no problem at all. But, Yen Pil, after me, Yen Pil Vaiyakam Maruvadum Yen Badu or Malukam Mundalo, but there is one question. So, who will be ruling this Ayodhya kingdom after me? So, for that, I will be needing, requiring a child to do it right. So, there can be several reasons why a person needs a child. And but Dasharatha gives a beautiful answer. He says, why do we need a child? He is a security. First, security, not the security. He is a security <laughs> for us. So, that he will be taking care of us in the future. So there, that can be the reason why uh, people need a children, children or they are having a lot of uh, riches with them, Naraya properties with Naraya So that being the case, someone should be there uh, to protect it or someone should be there to obtain it. So what that they may require it. Or if you have a strong belief in our uh, Shastras and our Dharmas, then after life in this world, so we will be going to other Lokas. So in order to do proper life. If you find a funeral rights for us and for Tarpana Adhikaryas, then we need a children or to protect us. So all these are the reasons why we need a child. But Dasharatha mentions a different reason. He says, Adhuntara Omivaram, Antanalaralum, Varundhari Indriye Varvin Vahinar, Irunpuya Udakku Nathyan Vinyan Varuor, Arunthuyar Varuttamum Yen Agandai Yendra So he is mentioning that he has been following the dharma that the dharma that he has been following the way in which he has been protecting the people the way in which he has been protecting the sadhus in order to continue the activities in order to continue the dharmic activities that he has been doing he needs a child it seems So this is the way, that is the reason why he needs Chitra to continue the dharma that he has been doing so not that he is having a lot of riches, not that he is having a lot of money, not that he needs someone to protect him, not that he needs someone to do a few final rituals for him. So all these things are not the reason for Dasharatha to need a child. He is mentioning that he needs a child to continue the dharma that he is doing. So great Mahans or great Sadhus, they will be requiring child for the dharma that they have been doing. So 
तो फॉर दी भक्ति दे दे हैव बीन डूइंग दे नीड अ पर्सन टू कंटिन्यूअली भक्ति दे सो दिस इज द चरित्र ऑफ तुलसीदास स्वामी तुलसीदास ऑफ फादर प्रेस टू राम सर प्रभु फॉर दैट रीजन बिकॉज़ ही इज नॉट हैविंग अ चेंज सो दैट ही शुड कंटिन्यू द राम भक्ति टू बी कंटिन्यू सो फॉर दैट फॉर दैट रीजन ही नीड्स अ चेंज एंड इफ यू सी वाल्मीकि रामायण ऑफ इट गिव्स अ डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट इट सेस मम लालप्यमानस्य सुखार्थं नास्ति मयि सुखं तदर्थं हयमे नेक्ष्यामी इति मते रुममय सो Ramayana, we have three Ramayana that we will be taking. So we see this Valmiki Ramayana, Kamba Ramayana, and the Tulsi Das Ramayana. And this portion, all the three people have their own way of telling it. So if you see in the case of Valmiki Ramayana, Valmiki Dasaratha goes and asks advice from Vasista. And the reason that Dasaratha What he needs to do is mentioned by Dasaratha himself. He says that I am ready to do a yajna to obtain a child. But if you see in Kamba Ramayana, it is not so. He is asking Vasista what he should do. Similarly, in Tulsi Ramayana, also it is mentioned what I should do to obtain a child. But in Valmiki Ramayana, it is different. Tadartham haya me. He has decided what he should do. Tadartham haya me. I am ready to do a putra kamechi yajna. So for that, what I should do? Mama Lalapya Manasya, so he gives the reason why he needs a child. Mama Lalapya Manasya, so if a child is there in the house, only then I can cuddle him, I can enjoy with him. So yam konchatu toru vandha. Mama Lalapya Manasya. Second one is Lalapya Manasya. In the old days, he should get a mother. The child, you know, the children will become the older people then, then the older people will become the child. So you have to understand that. All these people come over there. We should understand uh, why they are sorrow. Uh, uh, Either after sad or after we should understand. So for that, the older people will become the child. So if you see in the different way, mama all of them are saying, "I am going to do this." Why are you going to do this? Tempo, many more days. And that's why it's fifty thousand now. So mama all of them are saying, "And if you see in another part of this lapa, yatta yam baj, we need a child just to call." Otherwise, the house uh, will be very silent. Only if there is a child, hey, hey, here is a boot. What are they? What are they? A boot? Okay, so only boot. It is only possible. Only we have a child. So, lap of yatta yam vachi, vachi means calling. So, in order to call, we need a child. So, mama lalapya manasya sutatham nasti vai sukha. And if you see Mahabharata, uh, the greatest happiness or anandam is Brahma sukha. So, if a person attains uh, Such a great status of a jnani, then that is the greatest ananda or greatest sukham. And uh, Vyasa mentions what is the sukham that is next to it. It is putra sparsham. So putra sparsham is equal to Brahma sukham, next to Brahma sukham. So Dasaratha is mentioning mama lalapya manasya sukatham nasti vai sukham. Then where is happiness for me? Happy again, happy again. So now, but he is mentioning that I am not happy. That tham haya me de na. यक्षामीति मध्यर्मा मैं ही मैंने चाहा मैंने नहीं टूटूंगा यक्षिया तो व्हाट इज़ द यक्षिया व्हाट शुड आई डू सो इम्मीडिएटली व्हाट वसिता सेस साल वर्षा प्राप्ति से पुत्राने अभिप्रेतां स्थापातीवा यस्य ते धार्मिकि बुद्धि ही यम पुत्रात्था मालता सो ही मेंशन्स डोंट वरी डेफिनेटली विलेवर च Sarvatha, you definitely have a child because of the shraddha and bhakti that you have towards dharma. So, mom, uh, sarvatha prapsya se putra abhi prayatam shchapatsiva yasya te dharmi ki buddhi hi yam putra thamagata. So, definitely you have a child. You proceed with the first you do ashramena yaga, then concluding with putra kamesti yaga, then definitely you have a child because there is some sin that is uh, uh, Making that's why that's not to have a child. So for that we we should identify what that sin is. Then we can't go to our earlier birth to identify what that sin is. Or in this birth also it's difficult because we are never aware that we are committing the sin, whatever it may be. When ever we commit a sin, you only if it is so big or it is only realizable we will understand that that is a sin. Then all the nandu poro immediately there is an ant there. Then we should come and check on it. That is a sin. We have killed a being, but we don't know. We not realize it. So, other depending on that sin that we have committed, where it will come and impact, we don't. 
సుమంత్రాడు దశరథ రాజా ఇమీడియట్లీ త్రూ ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్స్ ఆఫ్ వసింత మహర్షి దశరథ హిమ్సెల్ గోస్ దే టు బ్రింగ్ రిషేశంగా అండ్ ఇఫ్ యూ గో టు రిషేశంగా స్టోరీ దట్ ఇస్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ద నెక్స్ట్ మోర్ టైం సో రిషేశంగా హస్ బీన్ డిసైడెడ్ యాస్ ది పర్సన్ హీ ఇస్ ది రిత్మిక్ టు పర్ఫామ్ దిస్ యాగా సో రిషేశంగా ఇస్ బ్రాట్ అండ్ ది యాగా ఇస్ బీన్ పర్ఫామ్ హియర్ and that am if you see valmiki ramayana kamba ramayana the conversation between the devas happened earlier but valmiki ramayana it happens in a different juncture where uh, yaga is being performed and the final avutis that need to be given in this yaga so the devas will come and accept it not that it is going to be their lunch or rather it is going to be the food for them they are amara they are already eaten amritam but why they are coming and collecting these avutis it is mentioned in veda bhashyam that only if they accept it they can bless us so it is their rule it is the matter system so devan bhavayata nena te deva bhavayantu vah parasparam bhavayanta shreyas param avapsyata so that is what is mentioned so whatever devas want you they if we give them then they will be ready to give what we need so in order to bless us this is the rule for them only for bhagavan there is no rules so he can bless anyone he wants but for devas to do it they need a proper channel to be done so only that that is the reason why we are performing yagas and yajnas and by accepting what we provide to them in that yaga they bless us so for that all the devas are present in this sky to accept the ahutis that dasharatha is giving but they are not able to and the reason for that is because of the fear that they have towards ravana ravana is forcing them not to accept it because of his powers and his capabilities and if they accept it our adi vanga varudhu so that being the case they are refraining from obtaining it and they are searching for a remedy for it so how can ravana be eliminated so what is the way for it so there is a conversation in this night that is happening and all the devas are speaking among themselves and there is parmeshwara and uh, uh, there is brahma dev also present there so few people say let us go to vaikunta and see bhagavan so few devas say let us go to shila there is niki ocean and find bhagavan so all of them are giving their own options and in tulasi ramayanam guru guru parmeshwara says so why should we go to vaikuntham or why should we go to niki ocean bhagavan is present everywhere hari vyapaka sarvatra samana but for him to manifest in front of us there is one thing that is required prema dev prakata hoi mai jaha so i know that the only reason or only thing that makes bhagavan to manifest in front of us this is the bhakti that they love that we have for him so immediately all the devas accept and they do a beautiful prayer to bhagavan and bhagavan immediately comes in front of him ye etasmin antare vishnu upayalo mahadyuhi shankha chakra gada panihi idavasa jagatpati vainadeyam samarukya bhaskaraha toyakam yatha taptaha taka ke yuro vandyamana surottamai at that moment when they were speaking all these things ye etasmin antare vishnu in front of them bhagavan manifested upayato mahadyuhi so he is illuminating it is full of light shankha chakra gada apani sai shankha chakra mangale ni sai pita vasa jagatpati hi vai vai pita par and he is the lord of the entire universe vai nageyam samarukya hi brings he is on gaura bhagavan and he is along with gaura bhagavan bhaskara toya damyata vai kau the sun rises in between two mountains that is the way in which bhagavan avirbhav bhaskara toya damyata tapta hatara ke yuro vandyamana surottamai so immediately all the devas fall at bhagavan's feet and bhagavan approaching them and manifesting in front of them is equivalent to that of on a sunny summer day when on without unexpectedly without expecting a lot of dark clouds join in the sky so how beautiful and how pleasant and how happy we will feel because from the morning we have been affected by the heat of the sun so if dark clouds join so it will look so that is the way in which the devas experience bhagavan's arrival is so santapagnam sakala jagatam sharga chapadinam లక్ష్మీరిత్యుల్లసిత 
So this is a beautiful shokam from Boja Chambuka, several Ramayanas. And there are Ramayana in each language. So this is a Ramayana that is done by a king called Boja. And he mentions that the arrival of Bhagavan is so beautiful and he compares it with a dark cloud, Santapagna. So immediately when there are dark clouds in the sky, so our, our heart will be really happy. On a sunny day, winter or the weather, but on a sunny day it will be happy. Because that will give us uh, some energy, that will make us happy, it will make us cool, it will make give us peace. So Santa Apagnam Sakala Jagatam, when this cloud approach, all the devas and all the birds are really happy. See, Santa Apagnam Sakala Jagatam and for the sky and the clouds, the clouds will have a rainbow associated with it, right? When there is rain and sun together. So for that, there should be a uh, rainbow here. So what is that rainbow is Sharunga Chapa Giram Bhagavan is holding his bow in his hand. So in Tamil we call it Vanagi. And this is a will in his hand. So Sharunga Chapa Giram. And the clouds have lightning along with them, associated with them, right? So for this cloud, what is that lightning? It is Lakshmi Vidyullakasi. So on his Vakshasara, he is holding Taya Lakshmi Devi there. And Lakshmi Devi is gold in color. So when he is approaching along with Lakshmi Devi, it is that a lightning is sparkling from the clouds. So Lakshmi Vidyullasitam Asati Gucha Satchayakayam Vaikunthakyam Muni Janamanas Chatakanam Sharanyam And there are few birds called Chataka Bhakshi. So what these birds do, they want they only drink water directly from the clouds when they come down as rain. So they don't drink the water in this world or they, the rain water if it comes and joins this world. So only they directly drink the water from the clouds. So there are few Chataka Bhakshis like that expecting the clouds to come. Likewise, when these devas are coming and praying, there are other sadhus who are expecting Bhagavan's avatar and scenes and that Bhagavan, the cloud called Bhagavan is being expected by them. And it says, so when there is cloud, the final result is to drain. So what rain is this cloud going to pour? It is mentioned as Kaurumyam. So it is going to flourish. It is going to give a rain called Kaurumyam, compassion. And what is the name of this cloud? So this cloud should be in the clouds of several names. In English we call clouds. There are Ambhod, Ambhodaram, Jaladharam, there are lot of names for clouds. And this cloud's name is Vaikuntha Aksha. So the cloud's name is Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha means Bhagavan. Vaikuntha means his place. Vaikuntha means Bhagavan also. So beautifully he describes the arrival of Bhagavan and the first habit of Bhagavan. He will not ask the reasons and all. The first thing is he will give away. So Bhayam Vyajata Bhadrambaha Hidartham Yuhi Ravanam Saputra Poutra Samatyam Samantra Ignati Vandhavam So Bhagavan immediately mentions Bhayam Vyajata Don't worry Leave off all your fears Bhadrambaha All auspiciousness will happen to you Hidartham All the good things will come to you Yuhi Ravanam Don't worry I will make an avatara to eliminate Ravana One Deva Sila Ravana Mato Kashtam you should eliminate all other people who is associated with you. Now, Indra Jiti is really difficult to conquer. Upa Karma is really difficult to conquer. Yes, that is what I love. Immediately, the next line he mentions, Sabutra, Pautra, Samatya, all his children, his grandchildren, his ministers, who are all the people associated with. Bali is associated with Ravana, so that Bali is also eliminated. So, Sabutra, Pautra, Samatya, Sa, Mantri, Nyati, Vandhava. So, he used to call that. Second relations, third relations, right? So, Nyati Bhanda, all those people will be eliminated, don't worry. Hatva, Kruram, Duratmanam, Devarshinam, Bhaya, Hap. And he mentions Sirishan because he is creating fear for all sadhus and good people. So, you don't worry. And I will give you an added bonus also. Just manifesting and eliminating Ravana will not be the purpose of this avatara. I am going to live in this world for 11,000 years. Matsyami ma mushe loke palayane puchi vima dasha varusha sahasrani dasha varusha satani cha So for 11,000 years I am staying in this world So you don't worry, everything Bhagavan is mentioned and now he asks How should I eliminate Ravana? Bhagavan is in the way he asks him how should I Ajahn and Niva That too is mentioned by Valmiki that he is knowing it But he is asking as if he doesn't know 
Why? Because from now it's a Manushya Avatara started. So since he is a Manushya, he should not be knowing the future. Since he is a Manushya, he should not be knowing the happenings in the next second. So everything will be a question mark for him. But for Bhagavan, Bhagavan is not mentioning in Ramayana. But if you see in Bhagavad Gita, he mentions to Arjuna, Arjuna, in the light of Arjuna, that don't think me that I am a mere mortal like you. I know what has happened with the earlier Janmas and what will be happening in the next Janmas also. He is mentioning to Arjuna, but here he will not. Because it is a Manushya Avatar, that is a Deva Avatar. Yannamari on Nanchi Dharayagara Sautar Krishna is very specific to Arjuna that don't think me same as you. Because for you who are in this world because of your karma, but I am not in this world because of the compassion that I have. There is a lot of difference between Bhagavan originating in this world and as ordinary jiva originating in this world. So that being the case, he is asking, how can I eliminate him? So Ajahn and Nila, he is asking Devas. And Devas mentioned that he has got wounds from Brahmadeva that he can be only eliminated by Manushyas and Vanas. So, Manushya, Illa, Vanar, Manidan, Vanar, Naran or Vanara, it is the only person because Ravana felt that these people are really powerless in front of him. They have never no power to come and wage a war or fight with Ravana. So, he has mentioned all other devas, but he left two people, Nara and Vanara, who oh, Bhagavan gets that. So, he mentions, uh, so I will take the form of uh, Manushya, so all the devas should take the form of Vanaras. So with that we will eliminate Ravana. So Bhagavan is capable of performing everything on his own. But if you see the final battle, he alone fights. All the Manadas just watch. They don't do anything. And they have their own uh, enemy or foe in that battle and they eliminate them. So but Bhagavan needs a big uh, association along with him when he makes an avatara. So all the devas are instructed to be born as uh, Manadas uh, in the world and they are expecting Bhagavan's Janma also. Sajadvam Haliyupena Putran Tudya Parakraman So Brahmadeva insects. So generally if you want to leave, it is we who will be filling the form. But here Brahma has filled the form for all the devas. So he said, I have given you leave for 1000 years. Don't worry, you can take leave. So Brahma comes as Jambavan, Indra comes as Vali, Surya Deva comes as Sudriva, Brahaspati comes as Manaraka Yukara, so Agni Deva comes as Neelan, Vishwakarma comes as Naran, so that is why he constructs the bridge. So Ashwini Kumaras comes as Mindan and Dividan. So Varuna Deva comes as Sushen and he is the doctor for all the Vanadas. Vayu Deva comes as Anjaneya Swami and Parjanya is a Deva who comes as Sharabha. So these are the prime Vanadas among the entire Vanada clan. And now they are expecting Bhagavan to be born. So Ashwamela Yaga comes to a conclusion. And then Uttarameshi Yaga is finished and from that sacred fire the Adhidya Purusha comes. So Pradur Bhutam Mahar Bhutam Mahamiriyam Mahabalam Krishnam Raktam Haradharam Mahamita Raktasyam Dundu Vishwanam So the Divine Purusha comes from that sacred fire and he hands over the Palisam to Dasharta Maharaja and asks him to split it with his three wives. So immediately the Yaga is completed. And the Avadha Snanam happens and Rishya Shringa is properly respected and all the things that is needed for him is provided and he leaves and Dasharatha separates his Vipayasam to all the three wives. So if you see in all the three Ramayanas it is explained differently. So first we will go with Valmiki Ramayanam. So if you see in Valmiki Ramayanam the entire Payasam is separated into two and the first half is given to Kausalya Devi. From the next half it has been separated into two again and that half is first given to Subhitra Devi and the third half again it has been split into two and that portion is half of that is given to Kaikeyi Devi and then the other half is again given to Subhitra Devi. So this is the separation in Valmiki Ramayana. Again if you see in Kamala Ramayana he easily separates. So he separates first into one third, one third, one third and first is given to Kausalya Devi, next to Kaikeyi, third to Sumitra and the remaining small portion is again given to Sumitra Devi because she is closer to the Sarada. Moonpilla Adha Pakatla Devi, so he immediately answered the Kausalya Devi. Sumitra, this is the way Kambani mentions and if you see in Tulasi Ramayanam, he beautifully describes because generally Tulasi Ramayanam has an association with Adhyatma Ramayanam. 
So if you ask me, you will see Adhyat Paramayanam. In Adhyat Paramayanam, Kausalya is given half. Kaikai is given half. So it is divided into two halves. And first half to Kausalya and second half to Kaikai. Kausalya drinks half of that Payasam and the remaining is given to Sumitra. Similarly, Kaikai drinks half of it and the remaining is given to Sumitra. So that is why if you see, Sumitra gives birth to two children and each child is associated with one of her, she is their elder brothers. So the Kausalya's portion is what Lakshmana exceeds and the Kaikai's portion is what Sumitra exceeds. And if you see in Tulasi Ramayana, Tulasi Ramayana will be relatable to Adhyat Paramayana. Where Tulasi Dasa mentions, first it is given separated into two. So first half is given to Kausalya Devi and the second half is again divided into two. Half is given to Kaikai Devi and the third half that is still remaining, again it is separated into two. And both are given to Kausalya and Kaikai Devi and Kaikai and Kausalya give it to Sumitra. So there are small variations. So that you can just know it. So there is no difference uh, in the way in which they drink uh, or this will have some uh, calculated changes in their cells. Uh, those things are not there. Uh, Four children will be born. <laughs> that is the criteria. That is Rama, Bharata, Lakshmana and Shatrugna. That's it. Tatasumitra, Samprapta, Jagruduhu, Poutri, Kamchatum. So all the three queens have their share of the poison and they wait for 12 months. And during these 12 months, they have uh, divine dreams in their uh, day, day, day to day life. Where when they are sleeping, they have divine dreams, dreams which is mentioned in Kalidasa's Raghu uh, Rusha. Where if you see there, there are four dreams that they have. The first one, uh, Lakshmi Devi herself comes and fans all the three queens. And once in one of their dreams, they are taken by Garuda Bhagavan in the sky. And the Sapta Rishis come and do puja to her. And then all the five Aindas, weapons of Bhagavan, Shankar, Chakra, Gadha, Padmam and the Shargam, all the five weapons take form, Deva form and they come and do service to all the three queens. This shows that the person who is going to be born here is not mere human. Paul B.K. will not explain these things because for him Ramakrishna Prabhu is human. So other Ramayanas have these variations and they are waiting for Ramakrishna Prabhu, Sujana, Tato, ஏக்கேசமாப்தேத்துருத்துனாம்ஷத்சமத்தியுகுத்தச்சத்வாதசேமாசேசைத்ரேனாவமிகேதிதோ நக்ஷத்ரேஅவிதைவத்தியேசோ
of the Prabhu who is inside. So on the, the way in which she is uh, glittering or the frame which she is blowing is equal to Chandra itself. That is what is compared here. Kamala Pai also mentions that. So Chandra and Mari, she is blowing. Why? Because she is holding Ramachandra inside his uh, inside her room. And next one is she is blowing because of Ramachandra Prabhu <coughs> present nature. Otherwise, how shall I will not be blowing? So for that, the Chandra, the moon will blow because of the sun's light, right? So because Surya Bhagwan uh, uh, from the Surya Kula Ramachandra Prabhu is uh, come out, is going to come out, and he is blowing uh, Kausalya there. So it is mentioned Kausalya, Ajanayadrama, Kausalya, Sushubhayatena, Putrena, Amita Devakasa, full of uh, blowing the Kausalya Devis and the child who is inside is also and it is mentioned Vayatha Varena Devana Adithi Vajrapamina. How Adithi Devi gave birth to Indra, that is the way in which Kausalya Devi gave birth to Ramachandra Prabhu, can't be accepted <laughs> by Mahatmas. How can Ramachandra Prabhu and Indra be compared? Indra doesn't have these qualities like uh, Ramachandra Prabhu and Indra's uh, sin is going to come in uh, and in the future in Balaganda, where he comes and uh, misbehaves uh, with Ahalya Devi. So how can Ramachandra Prabhu and uh, Indra be compared here? So Mahatma feel that this can't be done. So then they Adithihi Vajrapaniya. But Aditi is comparing this fine. Because if you see in Adhyatma Ramayana, it is Kashyapa who is Dasharatha now. And it is Aditi who has come down as Kausalyana. So Aditi name is fine for the comparison, but Vajra Panina means a person who is holding Vajra in his hand, so Indra can be compared here. So who is the next child now can be compared? So another child of uh, Aditi Devi is Aditya, Surya. So now Surya can be compared here, but Surya also can't be compared because there are times when uh, Surya can be captured by Grahas. So Grahanam we used to say, right? So Surya Grahanam, Chandra Grahanam happens. So the beauty of Surya is also compromised. So he can't be compared with Ramachandra Prabhu here. So now the third child of Aditi is taken into consideration. So the third child is Vamana Bhagavan. So Yatha Varena Devana Aditi Vajra Panya. So how Aditi Devi gave birth to Vamana Bhagavan. So how can Vajra Panya be uh, told here? Vamana Bhagavan doesn't hold the Vajra either, right? So how can he be compared? But all the divine amshas of Bhagavan have the impressions in their hand and feet. So, Aditi hi Vajra Panina. So, though Vamana Bhagavan doesn't hold Vajra item in his hands, he has Vajra Reka in his hand it seems. So, it is compared as Aditi hi Vajra Panina. So, this comparison is accepted because Vamana Bhagavan is also Avataram of Piruval and similarly Rama Avataram is also Avataram of Piruval. That being the case, this comparison is accepted. And immediately now, James Kausalya gives birth to Ramachandra Prabhu. Then in next, Nakshatra, Pushyet, same day, just moments later, Pushyet, one day after Nakshatra, every Akupula Varun gave over because these are all divine incarnations. So, Pushyet, Jatastu, Bharataha, Meenalagne, Prasanna, Jihi, so in Pushyet Nakshatra, Bharata is born to day day. And then in Ayurya Nakshatra, Maslesha Nakshatra, twins are born, so that is uh, 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 Lakshmana and Shatruna being born there and uh, the first person who is so happy is Dasharatha. So he has been waiting for uh, 60,000 years and finally he is having four children and the happiness that Dasharatha is feeling is equivalent to Brahmananda because we are mentioning early that uh, initial happiness, the greatest happiness is Brahmananda and next one is Putra Sukha. So now he has obtained this Putra Sukham here, which is equal to Brahmananda for Dasharatha. Why? Because it is mentioned in Bhagavatam uh, that when uh, Sudeva and Devaki are seeing Krishna, Krishna mentions to them, you see me as Bhagavan also, it is not a problem. You see me as a child also, it is not a problem. Both the Sukham will be same for you. Putra Bhavena Chasat, Brahma Bhavena Chasat. So similarly though, we don't uh, exclusively mention Ramachandra Prabhu as Bhagavan in uh, Rama, Valmiki Ramayana, but he is also Bhagavad Amsham, right? So, the happiness that Dasharatha encounters, that undergoes, is the same as Brahma Sukham for him. And before children are born, so with this we will uh, conclude today. So, we will leave the remaining chitra tomorrow. Sarvatra Govinda Nama Sankirtanam Govinda Govinda Satguru Maharaj